My darker than Hi, usual. friends. Welcome back. Or welcome forward. And if this is your first time, nice Maybe to meet welcome you. Welcome sideways. Welcome sideways. Welcome right. Welcome left. Um, I'm Elon over there in the all blue today. Rocking all blue. Home team jerseys. I'm wearing the away. <laughs> uh, is, uh, is Guy and... <clears throat> I'm happy to have you here. This is our Tuesday training. We do this every week. Each week is a different topic. Let me actually mute my phone so we don't get the beeps and breps. And uh, today we're actually going to be talking about a topic that I think a lot of people uh, ask us about and want to know about, and that is money. Uh, money is something that I think I haven't met a person yet that doesn't want more of. It doesn't matter how much you have. Everyone's always striving to have more. Um, so whatever your level of money, you know, maybe you're someone that wants to grow from $10,000 a month to 20 or 50 or $100,000 a month. Maybe you're someone that has millions and wants to make more millions. Or maybe you're someone that's, you know, money's always been really, really difficult for. And um, you just want to get to a place where it's easy and comfortable. Um, all of the things that we'll talk about and share about today are applicable to wherever you are with your money. And uh, we're going to talk about it in a, a bit of a different way because I think there's plenty of stuff about manifestation or visual, visualization or law of attraction or all of those things. Um, so by a show or by the comments here, if you guys could... Um, I'd be curious to just find out as we go about this, you know, how long have you been working on increasing your money or improving your money game in one way, shape or form? Just give me an idea and you can even share if you want to be more specific, you know, what you've done. Maybe it's read books, maybe it's join seminars, but just out of curiosity, you know, how long have you kind of been working at this? Um, because what I have found and I, think I would agree what we have found is that a lot of people feel like they do a lot of work around money and the situation doesn't really change all that much. Um, all right. So I'll just give you guys uh, a few seconds here. I see someone Facebook user who I don't know who that is, but yeah. Um, said two years. That's a uh, Robin Bus Busboga. Oh, Busboga. Robin, by the way, I uh, I messaged you on Facebook Messenger. So you might need to check your other messages. Uh, I should shot you a little message actually earlier today. Caroline says, working on me for a few years, book seminars, etc. Cool. All right. So we'll we'll get a few more in here and I'll uh, I'll share with you guys. So one of the things that I've noticed is yes. This is something that people, once they become aware of personal development, uh, it's a very natural progression to want to focus on this area because most people think that if they had their money situation handled, then all this life thing would just get so much easier. Um, so someone says six years, books, network marketing, awesome. And while I can tell you from personal experience there is a slight truth to that. Um, I'm going to probably say a few things here that might be slightly controversial. Uh, one of which is that money is kind of like the booby prize mm -hmm. that people tend to focus on because they have this belief that if they were to make more money, that their life would be easier, they'd be happier, et cetera, et cetera. And I can tell you from having coached someone who is almost a billionaire to people that have made seven, eight figures, I can tell you with certainty 
They are no happier than you are or are not. Uh, they are not in better shape than you are or are not. Uh, their family situations are not easier. Uh, life with kids is not easier than what you might have. Literally, from my, my experience, nothing really changes other than the fact that they can go into a store and buy things without looking at a price. But as far as quality of life, happiness in life, etc., and I think there was a study a while back that said that once someone gets to, I think, like 70,000, I, I think it was around that number, um, you know, from, from like zero to 70,000, the growth in uh, ease and, and happiness or whatever, like th there is some linearity there. But after that amount, it's, it's basically negligible. Um, you know, the things you buy might be a little bit nicer, but it's not like those things bring you joy anyway. Or if they do, they bring you like very small amounts of joy. So I'm just going to say this and then I'll, I'll throw it off to Guy here. But uh, so one is I think that people go about their money thing completely backwards. Like like they, they make money the thing that they need to go and figure out. Because if you were to just pause right now and think to yourself like, okay, if I had all this money and life was, you know, like money was flowing and all that stuff, like what would be the energy? What would be the feeling that I would have in this very moment? Like how would I feel if I had all this money? And for some people that might be safe, for some people that might be secure, for other people that might be free, for other people that might feel supported, like whatever your thing is, right? Like just get, just, just start touching that, right? Okay, so Caroline says, I would feel relief, but like relief is, is more of, see if you can dig a little deeper there, because, you know, relief is this like, oh, like I don't have to carry that burden anymore. But what if you weren't carrying that burden? Like, put yourself past that moment of just like, huh? Like, what would be that feeling? Yeah, well beyond the relief already. Right? It's Is it like well-being? Is it safe? Is it ease? Freedom? Like, something like that, right? And what I would offer is, and I'll let Guy take it from here. It's like, that is something that you can work on. And instead of going to chase money, because somehow we've we've uh, collapsed the, the idea, like if I can share my experience. So for me, money equaled security. It was something that I just came up with like when I was 12. I went to my friend's house. We were poor immigrants. You know, this guy's dad was driving a Ferrari and the mom was driving a Rolls Royce. And I remember opening the pantry and it was like, every candy bar and every cookie and every soda. And like, it was mind blowing to me. And for whatever reason, I just associated like security with this notion of having a lot of money. And so I chased money for a long, long time because really what I wanted was to feel secure. And it didn't matter how much money I had, the feeling of security never came, just so you guys understand. Because then you have it, and then you don't feel secure about keeping it, right? So if like the underlying thing for me was security or lack there of security, and I'm going to try to fill this void inside of not feeling secure with money, there's no way that money can fill that security void. And so when I pivoted to, wow, I can actually learn techniques to give my system, my nervous system, the feeling of security, guess what followed naturally? money. Right. And so I'll just leave it at that. I'll let guy take it from here. Uh, but I just want you guys to really visualize as we're having this conversation, what is the thing that you really want to feel in your life? Yeah. You know, and money and really everything is, is multi-layered, multi-textured. You know, oftentimes when we're having these conversations, it seems like, uh, oh, if I just figured out that one thing, like what's the one thing? Like really, what's the problem with money? But like if we if we simplify it that much, right? Because most people are, are, 
they, they take what they've heard at face value, right? We, we like you say money, you say, hey, um, <laughs> this is a funny one, like circumcision, right? Like everyone will tell you, well, uh, why do why do we circumcise kids? Well, it's because it's uh, it's cleaner, you know, like it's a cleaner situation. And like all these things, there's all these like, like uninvestigated uh, things that we just kind of have these knee-jerk reactions for. And with money, I feel like people's ultimate answer is, well, you got to work hard. You got to work really, really hard for it, right? But like most people who are blue collar, 95, 99% of people who are blue collar work extraordinarily hard, right? Have continued to work hard most of their lives. So if if working hard was the golden rule for making more money, we would see uh, people flourishing in wealth all over the place, but we don't see that. And so I like to remind people that, you know, working hard or when you look at Gary V's of the world, Elon Musk's and, you know, we're kind of these people are kind of put on pedestals that these people are exceptions to the rule. And we we live in a society that has a media that takes these people or these circumstances and, and magnifies them to make it seem like a lot of people are experiencing this thing when when the fact is, you know, it's the minority, right? Like the majority of people are not experiencing wealth are not experiencing freedom, are not experiencing um, really connected relationships. And so I want to kind of boil this thing down to a certain thing that if we if we get rid of all this definition of money, because there's so much weight around words like uh, money and uh, words like God, right? Like there's so much put on that. And if you just, if we could boil it down and take away the definition and just say, hey, here's what we have. And what we have in our lives is relationships, with different types of frequencies, energies, and in a certain way, this relationship that most people have between them and money is tainted. Now, this might come from traditional values that you have. It might come from like what Elon and I had, which is you grew up with immigrants and you, you, you grew up as an immigrant family and you watch your parents work really, really hard for you know very little money and stuff like that. And that they may have talked about it, they may have not, but it may have just been a perception in your field that it's like, hey, you know, when I look at something, I can't feel like I can have it because mom and dad are in this situation, right? Even if the parents wanted to give you everything. So what we always want to look at is like, what's our what's our interpersonal relationship, right? And, and relationships, as we know, are not uh, just this physical, tangible thing we can hold in our hand. It's also uh, when we're around people that we're in relationships with, we have um, emotional feedback, we have our spiritual feedback, we have our mental feedback, we have our physical feedback, right? Like if your um, your relationship is constrained with somebody, you might feel more pain in your body, right? So there's there's all these different levels of feedback. And so, of course, any of us can just change our minds and be like, yeah, I'm just going to work harder or I'm going to become really, really disciplined. And while that may have an impact, it's not going to be the impact. It's not going to be the ultimate thing that changes your mind. And I'm, and I'm going to tell you something from, from our days, like Elon and I, well before we had our coaching company, we were in the online marketing space, um, working in, in affiliate marketing, things like this. And at the height of our, our, of our ad spend, I mean, like when we were, you know, had millions of dollars of revenue coming in every month. And what most companies, most people online don't tell you when they have millions of dollars coming in is how much ad spend they're spending to generate that amount of revenue. So a person might be generating a million dollars, but spending $750,000 a month to generate that, right? So they're not really making a million dollars a month. And, and at our height, we were making about, uh, we were spending about 150 grand a month on Facebook advertising and YouTube advertising. And at that time we were um, traveling the world, London, Australia, here in the States, New York, all, both coasts, like really regularly. And we were teaching these long weekend seminars to thousands of people on and offline about how to build businesses online, make money, do marketing, et cetera, et cetera. And rightfully so, right? Like we, we were we were proven for, for many years to be top earners in, in companies. And so when people used to ask me, so how do I become wealthy? I said, well, you know, it's kind of the darndest thing that I've noticed is we're spending about 150 grand a month. And the only difference I can see between a really successful month and a not successful month is our mood. Just let that land for a second. Not our sales funnel, not our ads, uh, nothing else. Like we would run the same exact traffic to the same exact places. One month crushes it, one month does abysmally. And the only thing I could track it to was this month I didn't feel good, this month I felt great, okay? 
And so to me, even then, when I wasn't quite as energetically attuned as I am now, I started seeing this pattern, how my emotions and my mental state were clearly correlated to the results that we were getting. And how many of you guys can relate to this on some level, right? Like, and even if it's not around money, maybe it's like you leave the morning, uh, you leave the house in the morning and you're all stressed out. And suddenly it just seems like that day the traffic is a lot worse or people are driving kind of crazy and cutting you off, right? It's just like a more stressful environment. Now, is it a more stressful environment or are you stressed out? And so a stressful environment is reacting to your inner stress, right? And so you're experiencing this outer stress. And I think we can all experience that, right? Like you're in a bad mood, you hurt yourself. Like you suddenly st stub your toe or like stretch something out. Like that's just what happens when you're in a flow state. It's like you can do no wrong. Everything is good, blah, 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 right? So it's awesome. Like I'm not telling you guys don't change your story around money because we are due for a change in our story around money. Most people are, right? Like, and most of you guys probably grew up like us, either in a poor household or where you watch your parents struggle around money or you were an immigrant yourself. But like, most of the world has not tasted true wealth, right? Like children who are born into wealth have no doubt that tomorrow there's going to be more money in their bank account. And so there is. And so what we are always looking to do is how do we get our system? And, and like Elon pointed out, it's nervous system, but it's also what's happening um, energetically that you can feel underneath the nervous system to bring it to a place of safety. And here, here's why. When our nervous system doesn't feel safe, it collapses on itself. It like gets tight, right? Like a tight muscle. When you have a, a tight nervous system, just like a tight muscle, energy can't freely move in your body, okay? Another way of saying this is that the, the system is actually closing, is actually closing. So a safe nervous system, an energetic body that's feeling safe is actually open. And when it opens, a body is also able to receive. It's like, it's, it's like open for business, you know, vibrations, frequencies, such and such. And our correlation that we have seen the most is that people's wealth that they're generating is directly correlated to what they think they're actually able to receive, okay? Now, you might be like sitting here going, well, I wanna receive everything. Okay, cool, like that's, that's a good starting point, right, mentally speaking, like you wanna create a pattern where you tell yourself on a regular basis, I'm, I'm open to receiving, I'm open to receiving, but here's the truth, none of us can lie to our body. Yeah. None of us can lie to our body. And I don't care if you remember trauma that happened to you, you don't remember trauma that happened to your body, your energetic body, your spiritual body, it remembers. It remembers every little thing that's ever happened to it. Your subconscious remembers every little situation and how things were affirmed to it and such and such. And so this is why oftentimes when people are just doing like mindset work or they're like trying to work harder, yeah, they might be changing their minds or at least like managing their minds better, but the body and the way the energy is set up doesn't change at all. And you hear us saying this, this line here all the time, which is your reality is an organic hologram that is directly reacting to the energy or the frequency or vibration that your body's outputting. And so if you are finding it very, very difficult to create wealth or even to receive money, right? Because weirdly enough, like receiving money doesn't have to be based on any effort at all. There are plenty of things, that, weird stories I could tell you from this year, um, you know, of like, you know, I'm sure you've heard the stuff where like checks just show up in a mail or an opportunity comes that has really nothing to do based on any any work that you did or didn't do. Now, for a lot of people, if they don't if they can't feel a direct line between the work they did and how the that was responded to by making money, they think okay, if something comes to them and it, they didn't work for it, they'll actually feel guilty inside their systems. They'll be like, "Well, I didn't work for that." I don't. Yeah, like I'm I'm not supposed to receive that, like I'm not worthy. Okay, and this is all these like little layers that I'm starting to point to, which is this this thing about not feeling safe, your ability to receive and then not feeling worthy of it, right? And we have seen people that some, somewhat dramatically make a lot of money, like us included within a short period of time. And then like it will get sabotaged, like something will come along, the money will get stolen, a bad business deal will happen, you know, such and such has happened to, to Elon and I over and over and over and over again in our lives. Why? Because this this part in the system doesn't feel quite safe. Because like Elon said, you might not feel safe like, okay, well, if I had money, 
I can relax and have these options and opinions and things that I might be able to do, but then you end up getting a lot of money and now the fear actually enhances because it goes from, oh, I don't have it to, I don't want to lose it. Mm-hmm. And we've all seen what happens to athletes or in sports or anything else when a person plays, you know, they're not playing to win. They're actually just playing not to lose, right? Like that's almost always when, when you see the team losing anyway, right? So these are all the little things I want to start pointing to because it's not just you reading a book and understanding how a person put together a business plan or a sales funnel, a sales funnel that made the money. Because we've been in companies where everybody gets the same sales funnel, but for whatever reason, just a very few margin of people can make money with that sales funnel while everybody else sits down here and they're going, what's that person's secret? How come they know something that I don't know? And the only difference is really your inner attunement. And so I want to start pointing back to it. I'll give it back to Elon here. It's like, so how do we start doing this work of inner attunement? And then layering that on top of that, once we do the work to create safety in the body, then creating the more of the mental habits and the repetition that a person would need to create in order to start creating different beliefs. Because ultimately, the things that you have in your life, you are doubtless about them. You don't have a doubt. Like, you know, like for me, I've been dealing with a lot of physical pain most of my life. And there's a little part inside of me, like there's a big part of me that doesn't like that. I don't want to be in pain. But if I'm really honest, there's a little part of me, like a little masochist part that like kind of gets off on it. it. It kind of enjoys the pain. It has something to do with like, like knowing that I'm strong and knowing that I'm like capable and like I go through difficult experiences and uh, and then I even share it with my friends. Like, oh, look what I went through. And right, like we all have had this uh, kind of scenario, like Elon and I lived uh, in and around New York City most of our lives. And I could tell you when you get on the subway, I always used to laugh. I'm like, this is a place where people go to see and sit next to each other and energetically say, I have it harder than you. And everybody looks miserable on the fucking subway because everybody's trying to show everybody else how hard their life is, energetically speaking. And so their life reflects that. Every day is is harder and harder. And so Elon's going to hopefully start pointing here at what do we get to do as we, if we get honest with ourselves and we start learning, how do I actually see these deeper parts of myself that are not open to receiving and that don't feel safe? And I understand that until I, until I learn how to work, yeah, endurance, somebody said, right? It's literally called an enduring pattern. And that's where the masochist pattern comes from. Um, how do we get to a place where we can see these things in our system very, very clearly, work a process that enables our body to create more safety, It opens itself and then our self-worth stops being tied to our achievements or to our money or to anything else. Like like we actually don't have to tie our self-worth to anything other than our beingness. Like you being here is why you're worthy. You were born. That's why you're worthy. You have a consciousness. That's why you're worthy. Everything else is like crazy stuff that society and humanity has layered on top of it that like until I perform in a certain way, I'm not worthy now. And this is the the crux with money, right? Like, it's like, how are you ever going to be that person? Like, if you haven't created alignment in your system, you don't even know how you need to perform in order to make money or to feel worthy enough of receiving money to get it to get it back to you. Right. And so, like, this is the stuff until you clean it up in your system. Everything is a lot harder. I'm not saying that people that don't have distortions or processes can't make money. We see it. It happens, right? Like most really wealthy people are not wealthy because they've handled this stuff. It is just how their system is organized, right? Like, because we're all afraid. Like, let's let's just be super honest. Like, everybody's living in, in some type of state of fear. And we are trying to figure out right now as a society and in our spiritual lives, how do we feel safe in these bodies? How do we see, feel safe on this earth? And so the people that you know that are hyper wealthy or that are doing really well, just so you understand for them, the distortion is so great in a certain area of their lives, not making money literally is death to that system. And so they have to figure it out in such a way that it looks like to everybody else, they figured something out, but really they're living in a high state of distortion. I know that like the whole Will Smith thing is like really, really hot right now. And it is what it is, whatever your opinions are about him. But for those of you guys who may or may not have listened to his book more recently which is a really honest portrayal a very honest portrayal of himself right and it doesn't like just flash him in this beautiful light he's like these are like the dark spots of my life and fortunately or unfortunately everybody got to see that publicly um you know a few days ago like 
he's a person that seems to have it all together, but speaks very deeply in that book in a very eloquent way that he is that he is that successful because of these distortions, not because he handled them, because he's working on those things now so he doesn't have to work so hard you know, in his life to, to, to prove and provide all these different things that he has. So it's like, that's where most of us are. Elon and I are dedicated to you guys uh, building wealth in your lives, to you guys living as, as healthy uh, in your body as you can at the emotional, mental, and physical level as you possibly can. And we think that taking care of your money is a really, really important thing because that is the gamification that we live inside of. But if you layer it and make it this super serious fucking survival game then your nervous system goes ape shit and you never quite can get there what elon's going to point to now um i think is like okay so what's the actual work that we get to do to relax this body so that receiving is much easier uh things can be effortless and flowy for you and you don't have to work so hard at trying to like manage your system in order to figure out how to make more money yeah so uh steve wrote in here uh, you can only attract that which you are emanating vibrationally. And then uh, Alex wrote right afterwards, I've doubled my income the last two months from totally unexpected places that I didn't do anything for. Right. So I, I'm, I'm stating those things because I want you guys to just presence something for yourself right now. Money, and you've probably heard this before, is a frequency. It's an energy. And there have been times in your life where you have been in a certain energetic frequency. I mean, that you're aware of. You're always in an energetic frequency, right? Like the, the, you can't turn this thing off. That's why when people are like, can you teach me how to manifest? I was like, you're the world's best manifester. You're constant, every, every second of every day, you're manifesting. You're manifesting the way that your husband or wife responded to you or your kids responded to you. You're manifesting the... Uh, the way your boss is, you're manifesting the, the clothes that you wear, you're manifesting the way that the coffee person reacts to you. All of that is manifested. And it all comes from, if you can imagine, if you've ever seen a tuning fork, right? Like if you hit a tuning fork and then you put another one that's next to it, it will actually vibrate that other one at the same exact frequency. So I want you to imagine that you, this is a tuning fork and you are constantly emitting an energetic frequency onto the world. In fact, and just try this on for size, think of how you ended up in this group. Satori Prime is nothing more than an energetic frequency. And for those that feel that vibrational frequency, it's like a pull. I talk to you guys all the time and it's like, uh, you know, so-and-so told me about this and I listened to this podcast at this perfect time and like, or, you know, a friend and like the most miraculous of ways that brought you here. Because in your growth journey, you're also emanating a certain frequency. Ever have like the perfect book fall in your lap, the perfect teacher come to you, Whatever it might be, and this could be in areas of health, this can be in areas of, it could be a car, it could be, like, those moments that kind of take your breath away, it almost feels like um, a Twilight Zone episode where you're like, the fuck did that happen? <laughs> because you were, you were in a certain frequency. Now, truth is that most people are unaware, A, that they are this frequency, and even if they are aware of this frequency, and you ask them, okay, well... How do you tune your frequency? They're like, I have no fucking clue. I just don't know, right? And so what we do here at Satori Prime Land is we actually teach you how to vibrate at that frequency, right? So money is a frequency. I'm going to ask a question that's going to seemingly be off topic. And for those of you guys that have been through our programs, don't cheat, okay? But... For everyone that's new and listening, in the comment box, just let me know if you think that you are great at receiving or asking for support. Like, are you amazing at asking for support and then receiving support? Or do you find that you're this independent, I will always figure it out person 
And asking for help or support, let alone receiving support, is very, very uncomfortable for you. So which camp are you on? And just like give yourself an honest analysis here of, am I really great? Like does asking for support and receiving support come really easily to me? Or is it very difficult? And I'll give you a very simple thing that you can kind of look to see how you receive support. Um, a great way to look is like when someone gives you a compliment, are you like, oh my God, thank you so much. Or are you like, oh, if they only knew, like, ugh. and it makes you feel really, really uncomfortable. So Michelle says, for me, it's asking, I can receive asking, I just can't do that. Yeah, exactly. Previously, you'd never asked for support, but I'm currently getting better. Still difficult at times, though. I always rely on myself to get anything done, says Facebook user. I'm not really sure who that is. Andrea Toronto. Oh, Andrea. Nice. So, uh, yeah, much better since I finished L3. So I'm going to tell you, uh, another one says, uncomfortable, but it's easier asking or receiving from some people than others. Yeah. Well, obviously, we have like a certain crew of people. So now... The reason I ask that is I want you to take this on. When, when people talk about the energy of money, I want you to realize that the energy of money is equal to the energy of support. Let that sink in. The energy of money is equal to the energy of support. The level to which you have comfort in both asking for support and then even more importantly, receiving support will give you a very good indication at the level of money that you are able to ask for and receive. And for some of you, that might be like a little bit of like a, oh shit moment right now. <laughs> and can you see how as long as you haven't opened and work the channel, like the energetic channel that I was talking about, right? Like if the if the that energetic channel is stuck tight around receiving support, then it's not just support of someone helping drive you to the airport or support of someone helping you move or support of someone helping you watch your kids or whatever, right? At home, like <laughs> I find it so funny that um, I, I'm in a family where people love to cook, like, like, my, my mom loves to cook. My wife loves to cook. Her mom loves to cook. Grandparents love to cook. Like everyone loves to cook. But if you get into the kitchen while this person is cooking and you're like, can I help you with something? What is the automatic response answer? It's like, no, no, no. I got this. I got this. I'm good. I'm good. Right? Like it is those moments. That's what I'm asking. Like, right? Like someone offers support and our internal thing because we're like, no, no, no. I can do it. I can do it. Obviously you can do it, but someone's asked like offering to help you with something. And you're like, no, 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 I can't, I can't. That will tell you more about the level to which you can receive money than any money book or any visualization. And so what we do is, right, we go out and we read this manifestation book and we read this visualization book and money book. And you do it and you do it and you do it. I asked earlier, like how many years, two years, six years, multiple years, few years. But all of that is done on top of a constricted close off system that cannot receive support. So even in the moments that money does find its way through this energetic block, what happens? Does it ever stay consistently? No. Right? You have a little bit, you get really excited, and then poof, it's gone again, and you're back in the same scenario. When I realized this, guys, like the shift in money that showed up in my life was downright like unicorn magic shit. <laughs> Just, I'll give you one example here, okay? Guy and I, in uh, April of 2020, during like you know, pandemic, basically March, the world kind of came to a screeching halt. April of 2020, we're looking at ourselves. Business has come to a screeching halt. Uh, luckily, we had clients that stayed with us. But like, as far as getting new business, it was just, it was like the world ended, right? Crickets. And we are looking and going, fuck, what do we do? What do we do? And guy goes, you know, what if we took a sabbatical? 
Like, it's as good a time as any. Like, nothing that we're doing is working anyway. Let's just take a sabbatical. We'll do our own work. We'll meditate. We'll sit together. We won't think about business, plan for business. Just a month of just let it go. Three years prior, this was in 2016 or 2017, we had one number off on one of our uh, affiliate paperwork, like when we were getting affiliate checks from one of these companies. And the IRS withheld something like 50, it was like 54, $55,000 from us. Now, it was rightfully our money. Our accountants filled out the right things. Like the IRS had admitted that it was a mistake, but we had to go through this mediator. And for three plus years, no movement whatsoever. Like nothing. Okay? Push, 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 push. Guy and I started, I think it was, we started in like May maybe. End of April, early May, right? We go on the sabbatical. I'm washing my car outside. Guy calls me. He goes, you will not believe what I'm holding in my hand right now. <laughs> He's like, turn on your video. Okay, turn on video. Guy is holding a check from the IRS, which, mind you, we're dead, dead middle of COVID. Like, everything is fucking shut down. No one's been working. Like, nothing's open. And this check shows up. And we looked, we were like, what, how is that even, like, who is there to even send the check? Like, it doesn't even make sense. I forgot all and about that. <laughs> things like this kept happening over and over and over again. Once I got that what I actually wanted to feel in here was security, was safety. I began to do meditation practices, sitting with someone practices, sessions with people to bring safety into my system regardless of money, right? For a long time, I was chasing this money thing to try to fill that. Then I get on this, like, I had this epiphany and it was like, wait, I can actually do that now. I can start to feel and receive and ask for support now. I can start to open these pathways in my energetic body that will allow for me to see and feel and receive support. And this could be simple things, guys, like someone opening the door for you and you go, wow, look how supported I am. Someone bringing the food to you. Wow, look at what support I am. Your kids doing laundry or doing the dishes or someone from your uh, work staff bringing you coffee, right? Like you start to, as you realize and you open to this, you start to see that support is everywhere. And as you begin to drink in the support, like more support starts to come. Guy and I have built Satori Prime for the first nine or so years of our business purely by ourselves. No one, maybe like a contractor here and there to do like an odd and end job, but like everything was done by ourselves. Guess what? We started to do this work on like receiving support and I'm sure they were there all the time. We just couldn't fucking see them. Right. And like people from our community were like, we want to help you. How can we help you? Can we support you? And now all of a sudden we have like a dream team around us of people who are here to support and guy, every, like we wake up every day. And we are just like, wow, we feel so supported today. And guess what has followed? Money. From the most incredible, insane of places, money starts to come to support you on your path to feel deeper and deeper levels of support. Not because you need more money, but if your thing is like, I want to experience freedom, like liberation, don't go waiting for life circumstances to happen for you to feel that liberation. Because I'm going to tell you, you're going to wait a really long time. Do internal work practices that help you feel that sense of freedom. Start to emanate, like that's the tuning fork. You start to emanate that frequency, it is impossible for your organic hologram not to start to show up differently 
to attune to this new frequency that you are now emanating. Now, how many of you listening right now can get that it is going to be way easier for you to work internally and start to stabilize this frequency than it is to wait for the world and the people and the circumstances out there to actually allow you to feel that way. Because my guess is you have been waiting for decades Mm -hmm. for your circumstances, for your relationships, for your body, and for your bank account to, to be some way that you can feel that internally. And I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but you're going to be waiting a very, very long time. Because the world can ever only show you out there what is happening in here. Yeah, your, your, system is, your system is organized to perceive reality in a very specific way, right? So you may see certain things show up in your reality different, but like eventually it will be like different variations of the same thing you experienced before because you're, you're literally programmed to receive reality in a specific way. So, you know, we're talking a lot like kind of around it and like, you know, going internal and we're all like, okay, well, well, how do I do that? Right. And that's always the thing. And then the moment we say, how do I do that? We turn into a, a mental exercise, which this is not, that's, that's the whole point. So for those of you guys who are, are brand new to the community, uh, if you haven't gotten the meditation or the meditations that Elon and I provide in the group, I would just write meditation in the comment box below so that we can get those to you so that you can actually learn how to work with your system. Okay. Like how many of you guys work really fucking hard? Like you work really hard at your craft. You work really hard at your business. Like say I in the chat box. Okay. And you still find yourself in this place of struggle. This is, this is what we want to help you do. Cause there's a, there's like your awareness, right? Like when we're, what we essentially do here is energetic work on parts in our systems to bring safety to them. Okay. And what ends up happening kind of like what happened to Will Smith is, and happens to all of us is why I kind of, I don't want to give him a complete pass, but I just want to at least look at it from like, Hey, I've done stuff like that in my life before too, where I get super triggered. I get hijacked. And then I take action from that hijacking and it literally feels as if I'm not the one doing it, right? Yeah, and, and our team is is here in the chat. They'll uh, they'll check you guys saying meditation and they'll send that to you. And so what you want to get is instead of like working much harder out here, what if you just took a little bit of that, right? Just a little bit of that effort, and you turned it around and you started taking 10 or 20 percent. And that, and effort's the wrong word here because ironically, the more you effort internally, the less happens. It's yeah. actually learning how to sit with yourself in a way that allows for your body in your energetic field to metabolize energy that's in it. And why do you want to do that? Okay. Well, for the same reason you want food to metabolize when you put it in your body, right? Like if I put, if I eat a whole meal in my body and then I can't get it out, I'm constipated, I'm going to be in pain. That pain is going to have an emotional and energetic response in my body. And my worldview is going to shape itself based on that stress inside of my body. You guys got that? Like if I'm walking around constipated all day long, I'm not going to be at my best. I'm not going to be doing exercise. I'm not going to be having great conversations. I'm not going to be like enjoying my workspace. Like I'm going to be really, really concerned that there's this pain in my body. Now that's a gross example. And then like gross in size, not gross, but also kind of gross. Um, <laughs> but, but like w- this is happening at, at a subtle level in your body all day long, constantly. And this is why we miss it because we have been trained to only look for big things. My head hurts, my knee hurts. We have not been trained to look inside at the very subtle things that are happening inside of our body and our awareness that also are mediating and allowing for a certain type of reality experience to be in our lives. And so these meditations specifically are about how to metabolize that energy that creates freedom inside of your system. Yeah, even if you have PTSD, this will absolutely work for you and help you alleviate some of that stress. Of course, there's lots of really good therapies out there. And this is what Elon and I would say. There are a lot of really good therapies out there right? All sorts of stuff in the mental landscape and talk therapies and stuff like that. However, I want you to, I want you to take a moment and reflect and hopefully realize 
and I'm going to assert that you are not just a mental thinking machine. You are an energetic body. Let that sink in. Like you are energy and you can become aware of energy. Of course, there's form. There's the mental and there's the emotional and you and the spiritual. And you are all these things all the time. And so to separate and focus on one and think that that is what's going to create the change is just crazy. That's like uh, if you get four flat tires and you're like, well, I'll change one flat tire and then the car will start moving again. It's not because that's not that's not what the car needs to move again. Right. It needs oil and it needs fuel and it needs all these different layered things. And so I want you to get that your mind, this is where most people live, right? If I ask people and we ask all the time, like, where are you? People casually point at their minds, right? I always say people sometimes point at their heart because they think they're being cute and maybe they really are a heart-centered person, but they're still like, you're still experiencing the world from here. It seems as if you are back here somewhere watching this experience come through. And I want to offer you that that's not actually true. You're going to have to challenge yourself here a little bit. Your awareness is not actually behind your eyes. We do this all the time with students and clients. It's like once you locate awareness, you ask people, it's like, well, go locate your awareness and you actually can't locate it. Your awareness is located wherever you intend to point at, to point, like wherever you intend awareness to be, that's where it is. But for most of us, if not all of us, we have been trained to put awareness here. When you're here, in your mind, you live and you're stuck in the prison, the matrix of your conditioned mind. That's just what's so. And so your perception of the world, your perception of how to receive, your perception of others, your perceptions of money, all comes from that conditioning. And it's not like conditioning that you're like, oh, I'll take that conditioning. Oh, I want that conditioning. It was just given to you, whether it was culturally, at home, society, religion, school, through your parents, right? Like all that stuff conditioned you a specific way and so if you want to learn how to come out of that conditioning you literally have to come out of your own mind into a different state of awareness that can see and is not merged with that conditioning okay and what that means is literally bringing like learning how to navigate your awareness into higher states of consciousness and it is not as difficult as that sounds Okay, this does not require a long retreat. This does not require you going to do plant medicine work, although all those are really great tools. I'm not saying they're not useful. It's actually very simple. And for those of you guys who have participated in our intuitive mind classes or you know, are in our level one, level two, level three courses, like this is what we train people on, right? Not only how to come into the higher state of consciousness, but once you're out here, how do you leverage that for this deep internal healing process that happens? And it's that healing that allows for all these manifestations and reality to change, for your relationships to change, to your relationship to your health to change, for your relationship to money to change, and honestly, more importantly, your relationship to yourself and how you feel about your role in this world and your self-worth and safety. And so if you want that to change, like, give me a hell yeah, like in, in your chat box, like, let me know that, that you're, you're in for that game, okay? And then we will kind of point and direct you to how can you play this game? And so, again, the meditations are amazing. And if you're just logging in, if you want meditations that train you on how to do this, like we offer them for free here. And we'll tell you that why, okay, why are we giving this? I have a team of teachers around us, okay? A team. Why? Because we're still human. Make mistakes vis-a-vis -vis Will Smith, right? Like we get still get hijacked. We still do the human stuff. I don't care how much transformational work you've done, how pious you are, like whatever it is, like you are going to do some things that are out of integrity to yourself and to other people. It's going to happen. You're going to get triggered. You're going to get overwhelmed. You're going to get stressed out and you're going to get hijacked. And without external reflection from people who have already done the type of work that you want, just like if you are going to be in business, you want a business coach who's already done that thing, who can give you consultation on how to clean up what's not working so that you have more integrity moving towards what you want to be in, in alignment with. In spirituality, which in our opinion, right, like our personal spirituality, and this is, you can include personal growth and personal development in spirituality, in my opinion, like as far as Elon and I see it, like we had a big change over this last 18 months where we stopped looking at Satori Prime as our business 
and we started looking at our healing and spiritual growth, like our spiritual wisdom, that's our business. That's what we do internally. That's the most work. important thing is most important thing we can do is go sit on that couch and do our internal work. Like be be silent with God and do our work or you know spirit or universe whatever you want to use for that word. And our self-expression is coming here to share with you guys the wisdom that we've ascertained over a 20-year period working with you know conglomerations of teachers who have taught us all these really subtle but vastly important pointers that have allowed us to slowly come out of the psychosis and conditioning of, of the of our minds basically not the conditioning that we were given but the conditioning that is unconditioned it is the authentic self being and the more you taste that and the more you sit in that level of awareness honestly the easier life just gets yeah and it's not necessarily because the circumstances are always perfect it's because when a circumstance isn't perfect, you don't merge and get hijacked with that part again. You can just be the subjective person who's watching it. And when that happens, even really difficult moments in life, instead of you getting stuck in them and then getting into weeds with them and then trying to fix them and figure it out and managing it and using up all your energy and getting super fatigued to figure out what's wrong and why is this happening again, you just don't do that. You just let the experience fluidly move in and out of your system and boom, you're right back to a flow state. Yeah. And so maybe instead of spending months or years on something, you spend minutes or days on it. Just put that into, like think about how that might feel in your life. And you start realizing that results in life are non-linear. Okay, what I mean by that is that there's not a step one, step two, step three, a silver bullet process that a human being goes through to receive something in their lives it is just cleaning up and coming to higher frequencies and vibrations in your body that literally change and shift your relationship to the organic hologram to reality itself and so your relationships can start showing up different uh physical things that you're challenged with and, and challenges with health can just rapidly alleviate themselves we see it all the time with clients right can't gain weight suddenly can gain weight, can't lose weight, can suddenly lose weight. Pain in the body just disappears very rapidly. Relationships repair. Like Alex said, you know, this last month she's doubled her income and not because she's doing anything efforting other than she's just spending more time in silence. Working parts in her system, cleaning up what's going on in there and learning how to use higher states of consciousness to repair trauma and conditioning that has had reality show up in a certain way, right? And so I, I was gonna do a little demo here, but just for, for time purposes, I'm, I'm not gonna do that. Get the meditation and I would tell you, start using that, like do seven days in a row and you tell me at the end of every meditation and at the end of that week, the things aren't already shifting for you because we get report after report that this is what's happening for people, okay? So uh, just so you guys know, if you want support, like if you wanna learn more about how do you join our programs, the hell are our programs what do you do in our programs um we have uh, a staff over here that's in the group and out of the group and they're super super happy to support you give you information about our products and there's no pressure to buy anything in fact on the first phone call with our team you can't buy anything okay we do what's called a clarity call and that's to just give you clarity over like we want to know who you are because personal development guess what is fucking personal right it's it's very intimate and so this is the only way that we know to help you is hey best thing you can do is get on the phone with our team have a conversation with them and see what feels good for you if it feels good for you they'll just tell you what the next step is to talk to somebody about what the programs are and what that might look like so if you want our team to reach out to you or you want to book a call with our team their instructions are above this video but to tell it to you simply you can either just say contact me in the chat box again they'll reach out to you at the meditation of course but if you also want to reach out for a call just say contact me or there's that link above soulsandseekers.com forward slash book your call and you can just skip the line and, and, and book your own call right now okay and that's how we can support you so again i want to just kind of like recap here and then let elon uh say parting words before we go but like you know money is not about working harder elon and i have tried that desperately i know many of you guys have too we elon and i have astounding work ethic and willpower like those are absolute gifts of ours and i'm not saying that there's not something to be said about learning how to work hard especially if you're like if you have learned helplessness like 
you know, you've learned something about that too. And, and, and some efforting may help you, but you all, you also have to understand your lack of desire to take action comes from something that traumatized you. It's literally not safe to do that. So if you want to be like, I don't know why I can't be an action taker. I don't know why I'm not decisive. I don't know why I can't say yes to opportunities. Guess what? There's a part in the system. You clean that part up, you're suddenly going to see yourself doing things that you never thought you'd be doing. Your life is going to be radically different. And if you're on the opposite side of that spectrum, you work your nuts off. You sweat all day long. Everything is so hard, but nothing ever seems good to happen to you. Guess what? There's a traumatized part inside and that's and that's how it's acting and that's how it's reacting. And then like softening and letting go of control a little bit, you will find magic happening in your life by just learning how to release a little bit. And you won't do that until this thing gets cleared out. So it really is about learning how to come out of, honestly, psychosis, which is really just conditioning, like just being in a pattern over and over again and not being able to get out of it. That's what psychosis is, right? And so like we want to help you guys guide you towards what our teachers have lovingly guided us towards which is a completely different set of awareness systems that are not relegated to your five senses to open up a completely different world to you on how you can approach your life your relationships your money and doing your internal work for healing and safety and if you're up for that then absolutely uh, make sure you reach out to the team make sure you get the meditations because we promise you guys like guaranteed you do this work you're going to see just unbelievable things opening up in your life yeah and i'll just i'll leave it with this like if you want to shift your money conversation specifically it's going to take you taking decisive action different than any ever before in other words when you're presented with something and it's like oh i can't afford that there you go now you've reaffirmed that story Right. And I don't have time to share like the crazy stories, but, but if you, I think scroll, I, I definitely posted a, a thing here about money. Like, um, in, in the, I, I shared my story in the group. You need to create the line in the sand moment. You need to create the line in the sand moment where you f- hear that voice. That voice is never going away. That goes, no, no, no. I can do this on my own. Like, it's okay. I'll figure it out. That's the voice that's been driving your entire life. Right. If you were to take action and say, you know what, I'm going to now, I'm going to hear that and my higher self, the real me, wants support. So I'm Mm going to reach out my hand, as scary as that might feel, and I'm going to ask for support. That draws a line in the sand because now you have taken action, what I call like against the grain action. And against the grain action brings you the most light. If you are waiting for your life to show up in a way where you're going to easily ask for support or somehow like this magical money is going to come into your thing so you can feel that, I'm telling you, it is never going to happen. That first jump out of the plane is always the scariest. The difference that I tell people all the time that I talk to, it's like, if you found your way here, I just want you to get that you don't have to do this work on your own anymore. Plug into this community. There are incredible beings, 26,000 strong right now, who are on this journey with you. These are your soul brothers, soul sisters, right? Like soul beings doing their soul's work here in human form now at this time. Plug in, get connected. We're all here on the same ride. All on the same ride. We love you guys very much. Thank you for being here. Thank you for your awareness. We value it very, very much. Uh, We're here every single Tuesday at the same time, 11 a.m. Pacific, uh, 2 p.m. Eastern. Again, if you need support from anybody uh, from our team, there is a team of people that are scouring these comment boxes. You could just post in the group, hey, I'd love some support. Hey, I want to have a conversation. Again, no pressure to do anything and guys like our our programs are designed in a very very uh progressive way to help you bring to these higher states of consciousness and again we honestly kind of wherever you are at your income level uh we can work with you we have opportunities for you to figure all that stuff out so uh don't don't use money 
if this is a yes for you, like anything that we're doing here is a yes for you, please talk to the team, have them help you figure out how to get in there. And uh, yeah, we'd love to support you on your beautiful transformational journey. Peace out, Cub Scout. Love you lots. Bye-bye.